This is the JLG 450 AJS. Those who intend to use any machine with characteristics of weight, height, width, length or complexity, which differ significantly to the training they have received, should ensure that they receive a familiarisation to cover the differences. It is the employer's responsibility to ensure that all operators using equipment are adequately trained and familiarised to comply with current health and safety legislation. Machine specific familiarisation should follow on from basic training and cover the manufacturer's instructions and warnings, features of the specific model, control functions, safety devices and emergency lowering procedures. All of the above are to be found in the operator's manual supplied with the machine. The operating manual will be located in the black box in the platform. Please ensure that you have the correct manual appropriate to your machine and that you familiarise yourself with the table of contents in the manual, paying particular attention to items such as safety precautions, preparation and inspection, responsibilities, operation and emergency procedures. The information contained in the manual provides the necessary information needed to those people who are responsible to place the machine into readiness. It is important that the information contained in the manual be read and understood before any attempt is made to operate the machine. The JLG 450 AJ is a rough terrain articulating boom. Maximum platform height is 13.7 metres. The maximum horizontal reach is 7.5 metres. The up and over height is 7.7 metres. The gross weight of the machine can vary. Please refer to the serial plate located on the machine to check for accuracy. Gradeability of the machine can vary depending on the drive. Gradeability for two-wheel drive machines is 30%. Gradeability for four-wheel drive machines is 45%. The rough terrain tyres fitted to the machine are foam filled. The platform capacity, unrestricted, is 230 kilograms. The maximum occupants in the platform is two people plus 70 kilograms up to a maximum of 230 kilograms. The maximum side force on the machine is 400 newtons. The length of the machine is 6.71 meters. The ground clearance of the machine is 0.29 meters. Do not operate the machine when wind speeds exceed 12.5 meters per second or 28 miles per hour. Located within your operator's manual are a couple of diagrams. The position of least forward stability indicates the direction the machine will tip over if it is overloaded or operated on an out of level surface. The position of least backward stability indicates the direction the machine will tip over if the machine is operated on an out of level surface. Before a machine is put into operation it must be carefully inspected for any evidence of damage and inspected periodically thereafter. Please refer to the operating manual for information how to carry out these inspections. If you do find a fault, isolate, tag and report the machine. Do not attempt any repairs to the machine. Check all control switches and levers for any damage, loose or missing parts. Check control switches, levers and electrical connections for tightness and evidence of any corrosion. Check the access gates, hinges, catches and any latches for proper operation, damage and security. Check platform rotator mechanism for proper operation, damage and security. Inspect hydraulic lines for any leaks, damage and security. Check all tyres and wheel assemblies for loose or worn or damaged parts. Check components and hardware for security, tyres for wear and damage. The tyres fitted to the machine are foam filled. This will be indicated by a bolt inserted into the tyre which is opposite the valve. Check the oscillating axle for loose, missing or worn parts. Ensure the pivot pin and the lockout cylinder pins are properly secured. Check all booms for damage and missing parts. Checking that all pins and retaining pins are fully secure. Check turntable for damage, loose or missing parts and security. 
check swing bearing for damage, wear, lubrication and any loose or missing bearing bolts. Check battery for damage, loose or missing vent caps, electrical connections and tightness. Look for any evidence of corrosion. Ensure the battery is connected properly and secure. Check the engine bay. Check the engine for oil leaks, oil level, check for any loose or missing parts, look at throttle connections and linkage damages, inspect fuel lines for any damage, leaks and security. Check all access doors for damage, proper operation of latches, props and security. And check the fuel level, check the hydraulic oil level by checking the sight glass on the hydraulic tank. Hydraulic ramping. Your machine may have hydraulic ramping built into it by design. This means that the machine may not stop immediately when a controller is released. Engine start or auxiliary power or engine start, auxiliary power and function enable switch. Energizes the engine starter or operates the electrically operated auxiliary hydraulic pump. To start the engine, the switch must be held up until the engine starts. Control station selector. A three position key switch is supplied. The centre position is off. Key to the purple position is the ground controls. Key to the blue position is platform controls. Please note when the platform ground select switch is in the centre position, power is shut off to all controls at both operating stations. The tower lift control switch provides the raising and lowering of the low and mid booms when positioned in the up or down position. Main lift control. The main lift control switch provides raising and lowering of the main boom when positioned in the up or down position. Main telescopic control. The main telescopic control switch provides extension and retraction of the main boom in position to telescope out or telescope in. Swing control. The swing control switch provides 360 degree non-continuous turntable rotation when positioned to the left or to the right. Hour meter. An hour meter installed in the bottom left of the ground control box registers the amount of time the engine has been in use. Platform Rotate. A three position rotate control switch permits rotation of the platform when positioned to the left or to the right. Platform Leveling Override. A three position platform leveling override control switch allows the operator to compensate for any difference in the automatic self leveling system by positioning the control switch up or down. Articulating Jib Boom. The articulating jib boom control switch provides the raising and lowering of the jib when positioned in the up or the down position. Battery charging indicator. When illuminated, indicates a problem in the battery or charging circuit and service is required. If this is illuminated, please return to ground level, isolate, tag and report to your supervisor and manager to have this attended to. Engine air filter indicator. When illuminated, this indicates that the air filter needs to be cleaned or replaced. Please return to ground level, isolate, tag and report this to your supervisor or manager and have the machine inspected and repaired. Engine oil pressure indicator. When illuminated, this indicates that engine oil pressure is below normal and service is required. Engine coolant temperature. When illuminated, this indicates that the engine coolant temperature is abnormally high and service is required. Engine oil temperature indicator. Low fuel level indicator. When illuminated, this indicates that the fuel level is 1 8th full or less. When the light turns on, there are approximately 4 usable gallons of fuel remaining. Glow plug weight indicator. When illuminated, this indicates the glow plugs are on. The glow plugs are automatically turned on with the ignition circuit and remain on for approximately seven seconds. Start the engine only after the light goes out. Overload indicator if equipped. 
This will indicate that the platform has been overloaded. Platform Control Console Power Stroke Emergency Stop An on-off power emergency stop switch and a separate engine start auxiliary power toggle switch supply electrical power. Horn Push the button to sound the horn. Tower or lower boom lift The three position toggle switch provides function for raising and lowering of the lower and mid booms when positioning in the up or the down position. This switch is spring loaded and will automatically return to the neutral off position when released. Main lift or swing controller. The dual axis joystick is provided for the main lift and swing or rotate. To lift up, push the control forward. To lower down, pull backwards. To swing or rotate right, move it to the right. To swing or rotate left, move it to the left. This controller is a proportional control and this speed can be controlled using the function speed control. The main lift, swing or rotate control has a protective collar located underneath it. To enable the control you would need to lift up this collar and then actuate the function which you require. Main telescope control. The main telescope control which allows extension and retraction of the main boom drive and steer. This is a proportional single axis joystick which is provided to control drive. Push forward to drive forward, pull back to drive reverse. To prevent accidental engagement of the controller, the drive controller has a safety collar underneath it. Lift up the safety collar to drive forward and drive backwards. Steering is by the thumb activated rocker switch on the top of the handle. Push on the left side of the switch to steer left, on the right side to steer right. The drive controller is spring loaded and will return automatically to the neutral off position when released. Function speed. This provides variable speed control of all the boom functions which are grouped to the right of the control. For smoothest operation of these functions, rotate the control counterclockwise to the slowest position. Rotating the control fully counterclockwise until a click is heard puts all controls including drive, main lift and swing into creep speed. This slow speed is used for fine position of the platform when close to obstacles. A snail speed is used to indicate creep speed and is shown at the function speed control as well as the proportional controllers to act as a reminder. A tortoise symbol is used to indicate creep speed and is shown at the function speed controller as well as near the proportional controllers to act as a reminder. Drive speed switch for four wheel drive models. On machines equipped with four wheel drive, the drive speed switch also selects two wheel drive or four wheel drive modes. The forward position produces maximum speed by operating at two-wheel drive with high engine revs. The centre position selects four-wheel drive at mid-engine revs. The backward position selects four-wheel drive at high engine revs. Platform Rotate The platform rotate control switch allows the operation to rotate the platform to the left or to the right. Platform Leveling Override the platform levelling control switch allows the operator to adjust the level of the platform by positioning the switch to the up position or to the down. Articulating jib boom. Push toggle switch forward to lift up, pull back to lower down. A toggle type auxiliary power control switch. Engine distress indicator light. This light will turn on and an alarm will sound when the machine's power system requires immediate attention. Soft touch indicator. When illuminated yellow, the soft touch bumper is against an object. All controls are cut out until the override button is pushed, at which time the controls are active in creep mode. Generator. When illuminated green, this indicates that the generator is in operation. Enable indicator. This green illuminator indicates that the foot switch is depressed and the platform controls are ready to use. Creep speed indicator. When the function speed control is turned to the creep position, 
the indicator is illuminated green and this acts as a reminder to remind you that all functions are set to the slowest speed. Low fuel level indicator. When illuminated yellow, the fuel tank is 1 8 full or less. When the light first turns on, there are approximately four usable gallons of fuel remaining. An orange tilt warning light is located on the control console, which lights when the chassis is on a five degree or greater slope. Do not swing or raise the boom above horizontal when this light is lit. The tilt alarm indicates the chassis is on a severe slope, which is three degrees or greater. The chassis must be leveled before swinging, raising the boom above horizontal. You must never depend on the tilt alarm as a level indicator for the chassis. After carrying out your daily inspection of the machine, you must then perform pre-operational checks and inspections from the ground control panel. When the emergency stops is pulled out, but the engine is not running, and an alarm will be sounding. This indicates that the ignition is on. When the machine is shut down, the emergency stop switch must be pushed in to prevent draining the battery. The ground emergency stop switch must be pulled out to operate the machine from either the ground control or the platform controls. This allows the machine to be shut down in emergency situations. The key master switch can also be used for the same purpose. Put the key into the key switch and turn to the purple or ground control position. Pull out the red emergency stop. Wait for the glow plug light to go out and then using the engine start toggle switch Hold the engine start toggle switch into the up position until the engine starts. Let the machine run up until the engine is warm. Check the emergency stop by pushing in the emergency stop. The engine should now switch off. Check each function and ensure that each function works in accordance with the respective toggle switch. To use auxiliary power, the switch must be held down for the duration of the auxiliary pump use. The auxiliary pump functions to provide sufficient oil flow to operate the basic machine functions should the main pump or engine fail. It should be noted that functions will operate at a slower than normal rate due to the amount of hydraulic fluid delivered. When operating on auxiliary power, never operate more than one function at a time, as this can overload the 12 volt auxiliary pump motor. Please note to conserve battery power, operate each function through a short cycle. Climb into the platform by opening the gate and closing it behind you. Ensure that the gate is properly latched. Connect your carabiner to the anchorage point located in the platform, ensuring that your lanyard is shortened accordingly. Without putting your foot on the foot switch, lift up the red emergency stop. You will see the lights indicate in the indicator panel. The glow plug system will initiate, start up the machine by using the toggle switch and pushing the toggle switch forward. The engine should now start. Check the red emergency stop switch by pushing in the red emergency stop switch. The engine should now stop. Restart the engine. The foot switch acts as the function enable. To check the function enable system, do not push down the foot switch, but now attempt to try and operate each function. As the foot switch is not engaged, no controls should operate. To test the drive and braking function, pull up on the safety lock ring that is located below the drive handle and push the drive lever forward. To stop the drive, return the drive joystick to the center position. To test the steering, use the thumb rocker on, located on top of the drive control handle to steer left and steer right. Now test all the platform control functions by cycling through all functions on the platform console.
drive orientation. When the boom is swung over the rear tyres or further in either direction, the drive orientation indicator will illuminate when the drive function is selected. Push and release the switch and within 3 seconds move the drive or steer control to activate drive or steer. As with any drive in motion, please ensure that you check the orientation arrows on both the chassis and the platform controls. Elevated drive speed. The drive speed should switch to creep mode if the lower boom is elevated or the main boom is elevated above the horizontal. Pull out red emergency stop. Depress and hold down the foot switch. Push and hold auxiliary power switch to on. Operate the appropriate control switch lever or control. Your function will now work. To stop auxiliary power working, release the auxiliary power and take your foot off the foot switch. Oscillating axle lockout test. Ensure the boom is fully retracted, lowered and centred between the drive wheels. Place a 15cm high block in front of the left front wheel. Place drive control lever to the forward position and carefully drive the machine up until the left wheel is on top of the block. Carefully activate the swing control lever and position the boom over the right side of the machine. Now drive off the block. Have an assistant check to see that the wheel remains in the elevated position off the ground. Now carefully activate the swing control lever and return the boom to the stowed position which is centred between the drive wheels. When the boom reaches the centre stowed position the lockout cylinder should release and allow the wheel to rest on the ground. Please note it may be necessary to activate the drive in order to release the cylinder. Now repeat the process for the right hand wheel. If lockout cylinders do not function properly, isolate, tag and report the machine to your supervisor and manager. To shut down and secure the machine, drive the machine to a suitable flat surface. Ensure the main boom is fully retracted and lowered over the rear drive axle. All access panels and doors must be closed and secure. Remove all load from the platform and allow the engine to operate at 3 to 5 minutes on the low setting to reduce the engine temperature. Push in the red emergency stop in the platform. Turn the key switch to the centre off position and push in the red emergency stop at the ground control. Remove the key. Secondary guarding. The SkyGuard system is designed as an enhanced control panel protection. When activated, the system stops the functions in use at the time of the activation and also activates the horn. In some cases, the function in use at the time of activation will also be momentarily reversed. If equipped, an optional flashing strobe light will also be activated. The SkyGuard switch is located in the platform. When the sensor bar experiences a force of approximately 22.7 kilograms or 50 pounds, it will activate the SkyGuard system. Excessive force will shear the sensor bar mounting blocks. The SkyGuard override switch is located on the platform control console. Pressing and holding the switch will allow the function stopped by the SkyGuard system to be operated again. When pressure is removed from the sensor bar, functions can be resumed by removing your foot from the foot switch and putting it back on. This will reactivate the controls. The SkyGuard system does not affect machine functions when operating from the ground control station. SkyGuard daily function check. The SkyGuard light will be off after the machine has been powered on. Put your foot on the foot switch and push down on the SkyGuard sensor bar if the light flashes, the system is functioning normal. 
If the light does not flash, there is an indication of a problem with the system. If the light does not flash, isolate, tag and report the machine to your supervisor and manager and have the machine repaired.